Thank you. Now, before we move on to our first questions of the day, I'm sure the Chamber will wish to join me in welcoming to our gallery the Speaker of the Legislative Assembly of Ontario, the Honourable Dave Levac, MPP. Thank you very much. We turn now to topical questions and we start with Gillian Martin. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what implications the situation at the construction company Carillion might have on the completion of the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route and other infrastructure projects throughout Scotland. Cabinet Secretary Keith Brown. Uh, Presiding Officer, the Scottish Government has been working to manage or eliminate uh, risks associated with Carillion's difficulties since July last year, and we have contingency plans in place for affected contracts including the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route, where the contract contains a mechanism for the remaining two joint venture partners to deliver the project, and we expect that work to continue. We understand that Balfour Beatty and Gallifer Tri will now take the necessary steps to jointly deliver the remainder of this project. Uh, we will continue to work closely with ARL to assess and mitigate any impacts that may arise as a consequence of this announcement. Separately, we understand that Network Rail has contingency plans in place to deal with the situation and that these plans will be implemented. I am convening a high-level meeting with government officials and agencies this afternoon to discuss key actions and consider plans going forward. Uh, furthermore, we understand that Skills Development Scotland is working closely, as is the Minister, with Carillion's training provider in Scotland, Tigers, to understand how modern apprentices will be affected. SDS have advised me that contingencies are in place to help in a potential redundancy situation. Gillian Martin. Thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Carillion were, of course, employers to thousands of people, including those employed on the AWPR project. They also had many subcontractors, much smaller firms, who will be concerned about any knock-on effect to them. What work has been undertaken from the Scottish Government to help those employees and smaller companies throughout Scotland who might now face a very uncertain future? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, first of all, our thoughts are with all those who will be concerned for their jobs and we will do what we can to support them. I advised the Secretary of State for Scotland in a telephone call yesterday morning that the Scottish Government, through its PACE initiative, stands ready to provide assistance in those circumstances. But we are also continuing to progress discussions with the liquidators and the UK Government regarding the measures they intend to put in place regarding the private sector. I mentioned Network Rail and also the UK Government-backed contracts in Scotland uh, will be supporting Carillion employees uh, and to secure the completion of these contracts. Companies and individuals in the supply chain working on public sector contracts have been asked to operate as usual, so there should be no immediate impact on those projects. And a cross-governmental meeting has been convened today to identify ways in which further support can be offered to those affected by yesterday's announcement. That will include representatives from key departments and agencies. And we also stand ready, as I've said, President Officer, to offer assistance through PACE. It's also true to say that more information is coming in all the time and we'll take forward that information. In addition, we have in place advanced plans to establish a, a helpline through Scottish Enterprise to help any companies further down the supply chain who want to get more information on the situation. Gillian Martin. Thank you to the Cabinet Secretary for that answer and uh, for the assurances that he's given and obviously the work to, to uh, deal with the situation is ongoing. But the AWPR works are one of the biggest infrastructure projects in Scotland. Um, we see huge benefits for the North East and you know, we, we all, uh, in the North East we're all seeing it just nearly ready to be completed. What steps can the Scottish Government take to ensure that the other partners within Aberdeen Roads Limited can carry out the rest of the work without any delay to the completion date? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Julian Martin may have seen that the two other contractors involved, Balfour BT uh, and Gallifer Tri, have in fact advised the Stock Exchange of their intention to do exactly what she says, which is to continue on with the contract, which is their obligation under the contract that we signed uh, with them as Aberdeen Roads Limited. Uh, the consortium is responsible for delivery of the project. Uh, and we have uh, spoken to them requesting that they set out how they propose to fulfil their contract obligations for completing their work. Uh, so we understand they'll now take forward the necessary steps to deliver the remainder of the project. It is a complex process and it may take some time to conclude. However, I want to reassure the member and others that the AWPR contract is designed to ensure the project is completed. Uh, and meanwhile, Transport Scotland will work closely with the ARL to assess and mitigate any impacts that may arise as a consequence of this development. Dean Lockhart. 
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me first associate myself with the concerns expressed by the Cabinet Secretary for the thousands of employees of Carillion and associated companies who will be facing an anxious time. The Cabinet Secretary mentioned that the Scottish Government has been working to manage or eliminate risks associated with Carillion since July last year. Can he provide more information on what actions the Scottish Government has been taking to mitigate these risks? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I've mentioned in relation to the major contract, which is the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route. Now, as each of the profit warnings were issued in relation to um, Carillion, we, of course, put out statements saying exactly what we foresaw as the way forward, which was the continuing obligations and commitment of the partners to see through that contract. And we've ascertained that that's the position of the contractors, and they've confirmed that. In relation to some of the other contractors, so Registers of Scotland, um, have taken action to make sure that those uh, services provided previously by Carillion can be provided by others. Uh, Network Rail Advisors, in relation to two of the contracts which they have, Waverley and uh, Electrification on the Shorts Line, again, they have contingencies in place. Of course, they let the contract, we don't. They have contingencies in place to make sure uh, those contracts will be completed. So, uh, as you would expect, as soon as the first of the profit warnings were issued back in July, action has been taken, not directly by the government at the centre, but by the different parts of the government which have been involved with Killian to make sure that we mitigate and uh, eliminate where possible any risks to those contracts. Jackie Bailey to be followed by Patrick Harvey. Um, there are many questions to be asked about the collapse of Carillion, but clearly our immediate focus should be on jobs and services. Gillian Martin was right to highlight um, the question of the significant number of employees working for companies that Carillion subcontracted work to. So will the Cabinet Secretary meet with FSB Scotland and others um, so that businesses that are subcontractors um, beyond those employed on the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route can be provided with reassurance. And can the Cabinet Secretary tell the Chamber how many contracts Carillion have in Scotland for facilities management services as opposed to construction? And would he explore the option of returning these to the public sector if appropriate? Cabinet Secretary. In relation to the first point that Jackie Bailey raises, which is a very important point, which is about the status of some of the subcontractors and smaller companies, I would say that the vast bulk of the contracts let in relation to the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route have been let by the consortium and not by Carillion directly. They have let one or two contracts and we will look further at those contracts, but the vast majority are in the name of the consortium, so those should proceed as previously. Um, in relation to any request from the FSB to meet, we will do that, although we'd hope that the helpline which I mentioned, which has been established by Scottish Enterprise, might satisfy any questions coming um, from uh, that side of things. Uh, in relation to the other contracts, I'm happy to provide uh, Jackie Bailey with a list. It's a very short list of the contracts which the Scottish Government uh, or its different agencies, I mentioned Registers of Scotland, are involved in. In fact, I'm happy to provide any knowledge that we have of other organisations. You'll know about the West of Scotland Housing Association and in Glasgow Langlands. I'll happy to provide such information as we provide. In most of these cases, though, it is for the individual organisations or agencies concerned to make sure they have alternative arrangements in place. And as I mentioned in my previous response, I think in almost every case that has been done. There are uh, alternative arrangements in place, whether the agencies and bodies concerned have decided to bring those in-house or seek another provider um, that is down to those agencies but as I say I'm happy to provide Jackie Bailey with as much information as possible about those contracts. Patrick Harvey to be followed by Mike Rumbles. Thank you I very much wel welcome the cross-party concern and attention that has been given to the impact uh, on the workforce uh, and I hope that the cabinet secretary will continue to keep parliament updated on that but the longer term context also does need to be recognised. The, the story of what's happened with Carillion is intimately bound up with many, many years of domination of a, a, a model of delivering public contracts through these large, profitable companies when the public sector bears the risk and often is expected to bail things out when they go wrong. Carillion has been part of that, as indeed has Galliford Tri, which the Cabinet Secretary mentioned, and its share price has come under pressure in recent days as well. Does the Cabinet Secretary recognise the dysfunction that this uh, system represents, both in relation uh, to PFI and the Scottish Government's own NPD model? And does he agree that the Audit Scotland review of the NPD model, uh, which is due to take place, uh, I believe, later this year, needs to take account of the events of recent days and ensure that we avoid and eliminate this kind of risk from reoccurring in the future? Cabinet Secretary. 
I would say, first of all, in response to Patrick Harvey, that it's not possible to eliminate uh, all risk attached to it. And of course, long before PFI came along, many of these kind of projects, roads projects and others, were tendered and delivered by the private sector long before uh, P PFI was even conceived. But I, uh, about to nobody in my opposition to PFI, I have a, a, a conviction, a criminal conviction, for refusing to pay my toll on the Sky Bridge, the first and perhaps most notorious of the PFI projects under the Conservatives. I opposed in every way possible the PFI contract that my local authority took out for the new schools back in the early 2000s. Uh, but the fact is that the, whether it's a Tory or Labour administration, the constraints on public sector borrowing have meant we have to find ways in order to fund vital infrastructure projects. So the MPD uh, solution was one that we put forward in order to mitigate the worst effects, the worst and most obscene of the profits that Patrick Harvey talks about. And that's why we have uh, done that. And of course, it has to be the case, which I think is the fundamental point of uh, Patrick Harvey's question, that in any incident like this, government should learn lessons. We should look at what's happened and learn lessons, and I'm happy to give that undertaking. Mike Rumbles to be followed by Richard Lockett. <clears throat> I want to focus on the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route, and I would like to ask the Cabinet Secretary, he has twice said in response to que previous questions, that he understands that the other two members of the consortium will take up the slack uh, in the contract. So could he just confirm, um, is this going to cause any delay in the completion of the contract? Because there's obviously going to be a timescale involved with this. And when does he consider, the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route, what month does he consider the AWPR will be open to traffic? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, can I say that uh, I have said that twice, and it's, it's not just me that's saying that the contract uh, will be picked up now by the two uh, remaining contractors. That's what the contract itself says must happen. And I think it's to the credit of those that devised the contract that it has that guarantee within it. And also, it's also what the contractors themselves are saying. They have given uh, the commitment uh, in terms of the stock exchange. They very quickly, as has happened in other joint ventures uh, south of the border, they had very quickly to give the information uh, to the um, uh, stock exchange. Uh, and I would say in relation to whether this will cause any delay, there is nothing because of what I've just said that necessitates a delay to the project because of that process. It may well be, of course, that even in terms of the previous questions about the employees concerned, those employees formerly of Carillion will be taken on by the project themselves because many of them serve vital parts of that project. So, uh, and of course, we will be interested to see and encourage the contractors to do that. So there is nothing in the nature of the change which has happened that necessitates a delay. But of course, we'll keep our eye on the further uh, uh, developments as they take place. As I say, information is coming into us all the time. It did come uh, overnight on Sunday night in terms of the uh, final announcement in terms of the liquidation, although we had the profit warnings previously. So we'll continue to work on that and to work with the contractors to make sure that we deliver this uh, contract as previously stipulated. Richard Lockhead, followed by Peter Chapman. All our thoughts will be with the Carillion employees and the subcontractors and suppliers, but I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary is aware that Carillion also have the contract for servicing MOD properties in Scotland, including 650 properties in Murray connected to RAF Lossiemouth, as well as the accommodation at Kinloss Barracks. Whilst I welcome the assurances given by the MOD so far that there will be minimal disruption to servicing the MOD uh, properties, will the Cabinet Secretary uh, explore those assurances when he next speaks to the MOD or his officials do? and return perhaps to the Parliament or to members with MOD properties in their seats with more information so that we can give that assurance to the families that their homes will be serviced and maintained going forward. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the member raises a good point, and I think it's the case that the UK government has substantially more con contracts in Scotland with uh, Carillion than the Scottish government has, um, and this is one of those uh, contracts. And uh, I would refer uh, Richard Lockhead to the assurances given so far by the MOD, which says that it should have no direct impact on defence or the services provided in the armed forces uh, to the armed forces and their families. And housing uh, that's provided under this contract will continue to be serviced, catering facilities provided for and buildings and offices cleaned. I'm happy to, as the member suggests, seek further information from the MOD. And I would say that in the telephone call I had with the Secretary of State for Scotland yesterday morning, I did say to him that we have PACE, which the UK government through Job Centre Plus is also involved in. And if there was a case that any of the contracts for which the UK government is responsible in Scotland resulted in potential redundancies, we would make sure that PACE was deployed in order to help those employees in that situation. Peter Chapman, followed by Lewis MacDonald. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And, uh, first of all, let me say that my thoughts and are with the workers and their families who are clearly having a very difficult time with this uh, just now. And I welcome the government's contingency plans to help to mitigate this collapse. Um, I was going to ask if, 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 as far as AWP are concerned, that if there would be a delay, and I, I'm pleased to hear that the, 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 the CAP secondary says there won't be a delay, but I do wonder will it add extra cost to the AWPR. And I also would like to say that I'm very concerned about the subcontractors working on, on the con contracts right across the country, not just in the AWPR. Will they be paid, or are we facing um, many small companies going bust because of this? And finally, the, the contract, the, the workers that are, are working with Carillion on the AWPR, the, the, the workers, will they now be taken on board by the other two members of the consortium, or are they now unemployed? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I think some of those uh, questions I've sought to answer earlier, but in relation to the last point, as I say, I think it's likely that the two remaining contractors will require the work to be done that was previously done by the employees of Carillion, so I think it's a very good chance. Now, I think, uh, and I wouldn't want to be too definitive, there's around 70-plus direct employees of Carillion employed in that contract, plus about 190 uh, um, employed on other terms, including some agency staff. Uh, and it may well be the case, of course, we're coming towards the end of that contract, that they will have to have all that resource there. And also, I think the UK government has said in relation to some of the other contracts that Chupi will apply in certain circumstances. Uh, so we can't give a cast iron guarantee on the, the workers, but I think there's a good chance that many of those will be re-employed. And for those that are not, we've offered the assistance I've previously mentioned. In relation to costs, it's the same question uh, in some respects in terms of timing. Uh, we don't think there are any costs associated with this. The member may have seen reference by both the remaining partners of a hole in the project now between 40 and 80 million pounds. That's for them to consider with the banks and lenders that are part of this consortium. That's not for the Scottish Government uh, to fill that hole. Uh, but we will look to see if there are any additional costs. We don't expect there to be any, but of course we are having dialogue uh, with the uh, companies involved. And I undertake once again to keep Parliament updated as things progress. And if I can squeeze the last two questions in, uh, Lewis MacDonald, followed by Jamie Green. Lewis MacDonald. Clearly, uh, as the Cabinet Secretary has said, the two remaining partners are taking up the slack, and uh, uh, he will, I'm sure, agree that the failure of one of the three partners has been extremely serious indeed. The failure of another would be catastrophic. Has the government in the last six months done any assessment of the impact of the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route contract on Carillion, which has now gone out of business, and has, has the government done any assessment on the potential impact on the other two uh, partners in the consortium? Cabinet Secretary. I, I think I would, um, without speculating too much on a very hypothetical situation about potentially a second partner um, uh, coming out of the contract, I would say that in relation to Carillion, we have undertaken the checks that you would expect us to take, um, not least when, of course, that was signalled by the profits warnings, which were public profits wa profit warnings. So uh, we do carry out those checks, and of course we carry out checks on the contract itself to make sure it's progressing uh, as it should be. So I'd want to um, I, I make uh, no bones that there's no um, uh, information to suggest that would happen, the eventuality. Although, have it, was it to happen, then of course the remaining contract would be the one responsible for taking things forward. That's the nature of the contract, but of course that would be very unfortunate. So I have no information that that's going to happen, but I would confirm to uh, Lewis MacDonald that we do carry out checks of the nature that he's described. Jamie Green. Thank you, Mr. Ring Officer. Uh, last year, Crillian was awarded a contract to deliver electrification of the Shots rail line. Uh, it's a vital part of ensuring uh, connectivity in the central belt. The Cabinet Secretary previously mentioned contingency plans were in place, but can I ask what guarantees are in place to ensure the continuation of delivery of this project? And does he uh, anticipate that the contract will be awarded either to another firm or in some way the government would be able to support the existing uh, team that's delivering it? If it is to be awarded to another firm, what timescales is he working to, to transfer such contracts? Cabinet Secretary. If I could just clarify for Jamie Green that the government didn't let that contract, that is let by Network Rail. I'm not denying, of course, that the government will stand behind that and be paying for that contract in one way or another, but that, but that contract is let by Network Rail. And, of course, we have been in touch with Network Rail, and Network Rail have given us the assurances, some of which I think the member seeks, that that uh, project has contingencies in place and they expect the project to continue as before. I'm happy to see if there's any further information I can provide to the member, but the assurance has been provided by uh, Network Rail that the project will be completed. Can I thank uh, the Minister and members for, for their <coughs> forbearance, but there was a great deal of interest in that uh, particular topic. We'll move on